Hello guys, today we're going to be working on this side-by-side -side GE refrigerator. The model number is on the display and the complaint is that it's freezing up in the back panel on the freezer side. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings and during this video you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. Here we have the model number again. And the first thing we need to do is disconnect the refrigerator to avoid electric shock. Next, we're going to go ahead and find out why this back panel is full of ice. This is an indication of a defrost problem. We're going to remove the light bulb and then we're going to remove the racks to be able to have access to the back panel. Now, remember that these racks on the right side, they snap in place. So whenever you finish, go ahead and Put the racks back in place and make sure they snap in, in place. Next, we're going to remove the drawer, the bottom drawer. Get it out of the way. And then we're going to remove the two Phillips screws that are holding the panel on the top. Once you remove the screws, we're going to go ahead and remove the ground wire that it's on the top right of the panel, like so. On the bottom, there's no screws, but you can see that it goes in this slack. So you have to lift up to release it from that spot right there. Once you lift up, it's free to remove it. If it gets stuck in the ice, go ahead and just wiggle it out or let it defrost for a little bit. Now, when you see this ice there, it's for sure that you need to replace one of these three parts or all these three parts. My recommendation is replace all three because normally these parts will go bad one after the other one. It will be a link in the description of this video that it will take you to get this kit. They will sell this kit with all three parts, so it's very convenient for you. Again, when the ice is like this, most of the time it will be one of those three parts. So you replace the kit and it will take care of your issue. But if you own some tools, if you know how to use a tester, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to test which part is bad. But again, I will recommend for you to replace all three because again one will go bad after the other one and i'm going to go ahead and show you in a little bit how to do it we're going to go ahead and disconnect this harness that is in the back it's a male to female connection right there so you just press and release once you get the harness loose you will have access to the connection of this harness so the first thing we're going to test is the thermistor the thermistor is a little white piece that is right there in that spot, but it's covered with ice. Now we're going to go ahead and test for kilo ohms. And I'm going to go ahead and show you in a little bit um, the chart, what temperature should be giving us. I mean, what a reading should be giving us on the tester. Now you're going to follow the two white wires. And right now it's giving us 28 kilo ohms. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the charts, but I got to tell you, sometimes it's not accurate. So if we go by the chart, our zero degrees temperature, because it's covered with ice, it should be giving us 16.3 kilo ohms. Okay, so it's kind of kind of off at this point. It's not accurate, so I'm not sure if this thermistor is good or not. That's one of the reasons why I replace the thermistor, whether it's good or not, because if it, even if it's still good, it can go bad uh, pretty pretty soon. Now, you can see right there, we are testing for continuity. We're gonna go ahead and test the um, defrost thermostat and find out if the defrost thermostat is fine. We already checked the thermistor. Next, we're checking the defrost thermostat. As you see, I removed the heat element from the bottom. And right now, to test the defrost thermostat, we're going to go ahead and put one lead on this pink wire because if you follow the pink wire, it will go to one of the ends on the um, on the defrost thermostat. That is the defrost thermostat right there. And I got to tell you that defrost thermostat have to be a zero degrees temperature or at least 30 degrees temperature for, for it to come on. Here is another video on my channel. They show you with more details in how to test a defrost thermostat if you own a multimeter. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and link the video on the description of this video as well, in case you wanna go ahead and find out how to test this um, thermostat. You see, I follow the pink wire 
and it goes to the defrost thermostat. Now the other end will go to the connector. As you can see over here, it shows you with more details, the defrost thermostat would turn on at 30 degrees temperature and it would turn off at 140 degrees temperature. So that is the temperatures where it comes on. 30 degrees to come on, 140 degrees would turn off. So basically you have to be frost over for it to come on. If it doesn't have ice around it and it's not very cold, this will never give you continuity. So when we follow the wires, you see it's giving us continuity. One on the pink wire from the bottom because there's two wires coming out from the defrost thermostat, pink and orange. The orange goes to the connector, so that's a closed circuit right there. We have continuity between uh, pink and orange. This is the best way to test this thermostat right there. Uh, without cutting any wires so there you have it now we're gonna go ahead and find out if the heat element is fine we already checked the thermistor and thermistor checked kind of okay the defrost thermostat checked okay now we're gonna go ahead and check the heater I'm gonna keep saying this guys I suggest to replace all three and I'm going to let you know why in a minute. Go ahead and defrost the uh, all the ice buildup. I got a steamer, but if you guys don't own a steamer, go ahead and just let it defrost by yourself for a couple hours. Because if you put a hair dryer, don't use a hair dryer because you can damage the cabinet on the refrigerator. Now I'm testing the heat element and I'm putting my leads on the heat element terminals. And I got the tester set on continuity and I'm not getting any continuity at all. So this heat element is the problem in this case. But it's been many times that when I replace the heat element, like a week after, two week after, I have to come back and replace the defrost thermostat or the thermistor. So again, this is the part number. It will be linked in the description of this video and it will bring all three parts. Here's the defrost thermostat, Here's the thermistor, and there it is, the um, defrost heater, which is our main issue today. This is how it looks, the new one, and this is the old one. And you might find a little different, but it's basically the same thing, the same part number and everything. At this point, we're pretty much done defrosting all these coils. Like, like I said, I use the steamer, but my suggestion for you would be just let it thaw out. And again, if you don't own any tools, if you see the frost thaw, um, over, go ahead and defrost this part. Another thing that I want to mention to you guys, go ahead and make sure this drain right there in that hole is unclogged because sometimes it's clogged. You can use a turkey base to plunge it and make sure it's clear because sometimes it gets clogged and you will have water dripping into your floor. Now I put the steamer, but sometimes I use a turkey base or just put some hot water there. Make sure it's going down the drain because that's where every eight hours, this, all this defrost system, defrost all the ice build up and it goes to that drain hole right there. Now keep in mind that when you are defrosting all this, all the water is gonna go through that hole and you might have some water going into the floor in the back of the refrigerator just dry it out don't be afraid or just put a rack on the bottom of the coils when you are defrosting it to avoid most of the water going through the drain pin in the back so that is the only thing that you know you, you need to all the ice it will convert in water so all the water is going to a drain pin in the back of the refrigerator and it will overflow because it's too much ice so you just put a rack over there by the drain hole to grab some of those, um, some of that water. Now I'm, dif I'm disconnecting a wire that is holding all this harness because it's a ground wire. Sometimes that screw will fail in the back. So just keep an eye on it. And this is how it looks when you are removing everything. And I'm just doing it this way, that way I can show you better guys. But if you can work 
in in the refrigerator without disconnecting the wire that I just removed the screw um, it's up to you now over here I'm just going to calculate how much wire that I need and I'm going to go ahead and remove these two pieces by cutting the wires right there and I'm going to go ahead and um, cut the wires for the defrost thermostat and the thermistor right there this is the thermistor it has a clip you need to reuse the clip for the new thermistor and i'm going to show you how right now just get your new thermistor it will come with an extra wire you can leave all the extra wiring i don't like to you know leave all the wire hanging and stuff like that you can wrap it up if you want to like you know but I just cut a piece and I just use what I need. Now we're going to go ahead and put the clip like so. And now we're going to separate the wires and we're going to scrape them with our wire scraper. We're going to go ahead and use wire knots. Just use wire knots um, the right side. You can get those wire knots at Home Depot. And if you want, and when you scrape the wires, just go like this. I always use the blue ones, but I ran out, so I'm using another ones. They are gray and they're color gray, but they're kind of small. They still work and everything, but like I said, my um, the ones I use the most are the blue ones, which I think is the better size. I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you in a minute. I think I got one of them. So you can use the um, very tiny ones like for the thermistor, they will work fine. But you can use the blue ones for all the, all the project if you want to. My suggestion would be go ahead and buy a box of blue wire nuts at Home Depot and that will do the trick. Just twist the wire nuts there's a different ways to do this connection if you know a better way, like solder it or whatever. Go ahead and do that. I go ahead and put a zip tie to keep the wires together. And then if I pull the, it's not going to disconnect from the wire nuts. But this is the way I do it. You do the connections the way you think is best for you. Now I'm scraping the wires for the defrost thermostat. And remember there's a pink and a orange wires. Here is our defrost thermostat, which this one tests that it was good, but it comes in a kit, so might as well put a new one. Because I don't want to come back in a few weeks or a few months. Um, and this is the best for the customer. And the price for one part is basically the same price that for the whole kit. So common sense, might as well replace all three and just remove a possibility that you know one of the other two parts will go bad so sometimes you might find that the heat element is still good but the defrost thermostat is bad so again just if you see ice there go ahead and follow this video and do this repair yourself if you have enough knowledge to be able to do a project like this now you can use the orange wire knots as well they are kind of a little too big but they still work but the best size will be a blue one you will see i got a blue one and i'm going to go ahead and use it for this connection go ahead and twist the wires um, by yourself first and then twist them together that way you have a better graph connection next we're going to go ahead and put the wire nut this is the blue wire nut this is the one i use most of the time and over here i'm putting another zip tie to secure the wires together because I don't want to hold any wire or I don't want the wires to be um, wobbling and you know they will come loose from the wire now okay in a few minutes you will see how I seal those wires those wire knots the way any moisture or water gets inside show you that in a minute now we're going to go ahead and put the screws that we removed early this is just for ground in case it's a short or anything like that this is for protection go ahead and install that right there 
and then we're gonna go ahead and organize all our wiring that we have to loose up loosen up because we wanted to show you guys a better view for all these connections now we're gonna go ahead and snap this um, defrost thermostat and the tube just like the other one was another recommendation guys go ahead and take pictures every time you will remove a part or every time you're gonna cut a wire because a you might end up getting a little confused follow the video because the video is gonna help you if you have to watch the video a couple of times go ahead and do that as you see right there I snap the um, thermi store and the tube as well they go in a different spot again follow the video because um, sometimes those pictures when you take pictures before you remove something or before you cut any wirings or anything like that you might end up having doubts so go ahead and look at the pictures and then you will know what everything was so keep your phone closed or your GoPro any camera that you have now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how do I seal those wire nuts in the inside I use this silicone there's a special silicone for electrical connections but I like to use this one because this one will dry better in my opinion and it will dry even in cold weather there's some other silicones that they would not dry at all in cold temperatures this silicone I find out that it will dry even under water as you can see right there you can find this in the link uh, that I'm gonna put in this video or you can get it at Home Depot either way everything that I'm using guys to do this repair I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the description of this video so if you just want to order everything because it's more handy for you to order it online you can get it from the links that I'm gonna put on this video I believe some of them it will be Amazon or pretty much all of it will be Amazon now over here I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go ahead and press down this um, terminals because sometimes they will open up that way it will have a good grab on my new heat element or my new hell my new heat element uh, terminals will be a little thinner so this wire will be all loose you want to have a good connection so just use your needle nose pliers or any pliers that you have and kind of snap them you know go ahead and pinch those uh, terminals that way you have a better grab on the new heat element now we put in the heat element in place and we're going to secure it with the two filler screws there's the two filler screws right here and we're going to go ahead and screw it in now the one on the right is not a big uh, issue but the one on the left sometimes if you drop the screw it will go on the drain hole right there so my suggestion would be put something put a rag a piece of paper piece of cardboard I use a I use this wrapper in case I drop it it doesn't go into the drain line because believe me it happens to me a couple of times and I have to use like sort of a magnet to be able to get it back but sometimes the magnet doesn't work because they make out of um, stainless steel sometimes those screws are made of stainless steel as you saw me right there I pluck the uh, harness in the back just snap the harness in place and that's all you got to do at this point we're pretty much done just organize the wires put the panel back in place go ahead and plug right there the um, ground wire as you can see in this picture that's how it goes just snap it on the top of the panel and that should do the trick now put the panel in position and secure it with the two Phillips screws on the top at this point like I said we almost done go ahead and put your drawer um, your drawer back in in the bottom and then go ahead and snap this um, racks in place sometimes the one in the back you just you know push it in the back and it will 
snap the back in place as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and put the light bulb. And we're pretty much done. Just let it run. Go ahead and set the temperature. Oh, don't forget to put this cover. That's the cover for the light. Some of the refrigerators doesn't even have this cover. So if you don't have a cover, don't worry about it. But this one does have one, and that's how it's snap in place. Again, set the temperature. That is recommended, as you say, what the temperature is recommended right there. All right, guys, if this video helped you in any way, you can show us appreciation by giving us a tip using the following options that you see on the screen. If you cannot provide with a tip, is another way to support this channel by just dropping off a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and turn on the bell to receive notifications. Thanks for watching.